All right. Um, so, where we last left off, if I recall properly, uh, let's actually back out into third grade. How far are we into third grade total? We are 56% of the way through third grade. We're a little bit behind, quote unquote, like, like time means anything, because I did miss last week. Um, we focused last time on understanding fractions, and we got about halfway through equivalent fractions and comparing fractions. So I figure today we're probably going to get through at least one, two, like one and a half units, maybe two. I don't know. We'll see. We could always take on this teeny tiny quadrilateral segment if we wanted to, because it's teeny tiny. All right, let's go back into equivalent fractions and comparing fractions. Kestrel says, funny enough, I've been able to follow my son's math more lately because of this. It's only kindergarten and not that wild. Yes, and uh, you know the foundations that they're building. And that's the thing. A lot of kindergarten math involves a lot of really advanced ideas. We're just not calling them the thing that they are yet. We let people see how it works, and then we give them the name much, much later. Uh, okay, so we did this quiz, so we're up to equivalent fraction models. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what exactly they mean by that. The following rhombuses, see my uh, video on quadrilaterals if you don't recall what a rhombus is, um, and each is one whole. They're the same size, but this one is cut into four pieces, and this one's cut into triforces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so eight pieces. Three-fourths of A is shaded. Oh, very neat. Okay, so if you haven't watched my fraction video on the weird number, um, do me a favor and give me a few more views and uh, jump in at some point and take a look at that because it explains what we're doing here very, very nicely. Um, essentially, we have two of the same shape, right? And if you look at this, each one of these diamonds, each one of these fourths, is equivalent to two of these little triangles, these eighths. And that makes sense, right? We know that one fourth and two eighths are the same thing. Um, so if I have three fourths of area A, then I would have, in this case, all I have to do is shade. Let's see if I can make this work. Hold on. Sometimes my pen gets, uh, gets annoying. There we go. So we're going to shade this one, this one, this one, this one, this one and this one to make the same shape as we have over here. So how many eighths do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six eighths is equivalent to three fourths. Um, we're not gonna go that in depth every single problem, but I hope that really makes sense because it blew my mind the first time. I didn't realize at first that when you take quarters and go to eighths, you're literally just cutting each quarter in half. And uh, yeah, kind of blew my mind. Six over eight is equivalent. One half of the following rectangle is shaded. Which of the following also has one half shaded? So again, without using the words yet, we are showing, not telling, that um, two fourths, right? Two out of four is equivalent to one half, one out of two. Oh, <laughs> choose two answers. Once again, thank you, Khan Academy. Khan Academy is merciful in this particular way. If you hit check when you have a correct answer, but there is also another correct answer, it doesn't actually mark you wrong. It just says, hey, hold up, there's another correct answer. Uh, let's find it. One, two, three sixths, yes. I missed that one. Hmm. The following figures are the same size. It looks like, a, like an origami boat. Um, each is one whole. We have two-thirds of area A. That is going to be the equivalent of four-sixths in area B. And in fact, very interestingly, this is the same exact problem that we had uh, in problem one, right? It's just that our base shapes are different, um, and we're cutting into thirds and sixths, but it's still like the same exact kind of problem. We're essentially doubling the numerator, right? We're, there are now four things instead of two things. Remember, numerate means to count. So there are four things, and each thing is worth one-sixth, because there are six of them in one whole. So four-sixths is the correct answer. 
Two fourths of the following rectangle uh, rectangle is shaded. Which of the following has also two fourths? So again, one half is the same thing as two fourths. It does say choose two answers, so I will again choose the three out of six. That is also equivalent to two fourths. Following rhombuses are the same size, blah, blah, blah. We have two fourths, we will need one half. Half is a weird number because it's, or a weird word because we don't, uh, it doesn't reference the number in any way. I wonder where the word half comes from. I'm not, I, I haven't looked that up. Three sixths of the following rectangle is shaded. Most words in math have very, you know, clear meanings, but not all of them, and some of them are kind of weird. Three out of six is also four out of eight and two out of four. It says choose all answers that apply, so I'm gonna check all of them. That looks like three fourths, so that's not correct. The following circles are the same size, each is one whole. We have one half of one. So again, if we don't quite get the hang of this yet, um, we can break it down into, well, just color in the same amount that it has up here, right? Like literally, if it's a piece of paper, take a crayon, color in the same area that's colored in the first one, and then just count how many wedges that you have. Um, also, obviously, pizza is an excellent, uh, an excellent uh, aid, an excellent tool for, for dealing with fractions. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Jump back in there. Okay, so that is four eighths. And that is that.